There's no way anyone expected Disney's Dreamlight Valley to be anywhere near as good as it is. I for one booted it up expecting to be letting you all know just how bad it is and why. And while it does have two major flaws that I'll talk about, I think there's a lot here to enjoy, particularly for fans of games like Animal Crossing and also the Story of Seasons titles, created by Gameloft, who built a name for essentially cloning otherwise big names. I was equally skeptical as to just how they'd pull it off. I can show you the world of Dreamlight Valley, but will you want to visit? Well, let's find out. The story follows your own created character as they rediscover a valley from their youth. Upon laying down, they find themselves in the Dreamlight Valley, accessed through their own slumber. Unfortunately, the kingdom seems to have fallen into disrepair. Supposedly, their original ruler has left. However, there are some quite overt hints that potentially that was you, but when you were much younger. Regardless, you soon take on this role, and with the help of Merlin, you discover you have the power to remove some of the corruption. This is most evident in the purple night thorns that fill the area, and it's caused all of the characters to lose their memory and forget what they're doing. There are others that have scattered to their own realms, and you enthusiastically take on the challenge of returning life to normal. How exactly do you do that? Well, that's where we get onto the gameplay and control. Controls. As mentioned in the introduction there, there are a lot of similarities to Animal Crossing. In fact, this almost feels like Disney's answer to it. After a reasonably robust character creation, in which you can choose your skin color, sex, the different clothes that you'll be wearing, which has a good level of customization. It's then that you'll begin the task at hand. The first step is setting up your own house. Initially, this will be disheveled and run down, but through carrying out a few tasks for the other players, which acts as a tutorial, you'll gain access to the furniture tab. Now, why this is called furniture and not build, I'm not entirely sure but it allows you to completely customize your house. You can add in any furniture that you've acquired, zoom in and out, rotate items, changing the wallpaper, the floors, and there's possibilities for expansion as well. But before you do any of this, you really have to acquire the tools of the trade. The mythical pickaxe, which is stuck in a stone, the shovel, not quite as mythical, but apparently very good quality, the fishing rod, as well as the bucket. And all of them are easily accessed with a very well implemented radial menu. Simply holding a trigger brings this up. And from a control perspective, it's really slick. These tools of the trade are what you'll use throughout the entire game, whether it be digging up items, holding the button down to dig specific rows so that you can then plant seeds, breaking boulders with a pickaxe to reveal new areas, or just chilling out by a pond catching fish. There's a familiar catharsis to all of these things, but the use of the Disney characters certainly adds something. You'll find a few quite early, and the missions they'll give you are there to teach you some of the core mechanics. Now what's very cool is at any point you can switch to an overview of the entire area. The whole town is essentially your plaything. You can place items, remove them at any point, even picking up entire houses and putting them somewhere else. And as you gain more dreamlight through many different activities, including side quests, main story events, and all of the more mundane things you may find yourself doing, such as breaking rocks or removing some of the dead shrubbery, you can then put this currency into opening up brand new areas. There's a beach, a forest, what looks to be a swamp area, and there's a handy fast travel system. I'm sure many of you, like I was, was wondering how the free to play elements, or if there were any, function within the game. And I'm very pleased to say that it looks like Disney has given that aspect a real back seat. I purchased the £24.99 version of the game, and I haven't once felt like there was an overt presence requiring me to spend any real world money. There are even monthly events which you're still included in with the base package. What I did see was what looks to be some form of higher or speedier tier that you could buy into for, for boosting your progression, but it was a relief because I had to go searching to find anything that even remotely looked like it. With everything you dig up, with all of the harvesting you'll be doing, and all of the side quests for the different characters, you're constantly being rewarded. This might be in the form of small bags of varying colors. Some will contain new clothing, others furniture, but also fragments of memories. These come in the form of images, and they're not entirely redundant either. Some of them are used in quest lines, 
such as Mickey wanting you to find his treasure and you having to scan through the picture to see where he's hidden it. Sure, it's not exactly difficult, but it goes a step beyond what I was expecting. Movement around the world is very easy. Simply pushing the left stick will send you in any direction, and then depending on the equipped tool, you can use that pressing the Y button. Now, as many of these titles, it uses a stamina system, but you won't have to go back and sleep in your house, which is a blessed relief. You can simply eat fruit from any of the trees or any other cooked, and again, that's where the game goes beyond what I was expecting. Not only is there a full crafting system, but just one element of it, let's say the cooking, is more intricate than I thought it would be. After you've acquired recipes, which you'll find many of, you'll have to gather the ingredients, but it's not completely spoon-fed to you. You go to your cooking area and you have to manually check the recipe and then place the items in. Once you've cooked it once, you can repeat the recipes, but again, more fleshed out than I was expecting. The idea of collecting Dreamlight is always in the background. Through a menu, you can check through hundreds, if not thousands of different active tasks. These are things that you'll naturally do over time, like planting a certain amount of crops or getting up to a certain friend level with a different character. And once you've achieved them, you get the dream light associated with it and a slightly tougher challenge will then be implemented. This gives the whole experience a steady progression. That then enables the unlocking of new areas. And just when you think you've got to grips with what the game has to offer and what it's all about, that's when it shows its ace. And that ace is the ability to travel to many of the most famous realms in the Disney universe. I believe there are at least 12 of these that you can go to. Again, unlocking the area will require Dreamlight, and there you'll meet your favourite characters. There'll be questline story puzzles to solve within these areas, such as me helping Wally create blocks out of trash, with the aim being to convince them to come and live in Dreamlight Valley. And once they do so, again, you're reminded of how robust the customization tools are here. You can zoom out over that whole valley, and place their house exactly where you want it. By introducing them, they'll interact with the other inhabitants and also offer you brand new quest lines. No Disney town, though, would be complete without Scrooge McDuck. He's in charge of all construction. Now, the rundown state of the game when you first start has lots of Scrooge McDuck construction signs in front of buildings. And of course, he's going to require loads of gold coins before he'll do that. But these can be had almost everywhere, through digging, through breaking up rocks, through helping your friends, or just sell all your useless trash to Goofy. He seems to lap it up. Running parallel to all of this fun stuff is the friendship system, which, as the title suggests, allows you to give gifts to people, perform friendship quests, with every character in the game having their own friendship progression tree, awarding new items, coins and gear as you do this, with absolutely zero whiff of any payments or any random loot boxes. Happy days. It does feel to me like at some point in the development, maybe they shifted focus and were like, actually, look, let's just charge for the game and have it as a full proper game. And if they did that, then fair play, it's, it's definitely the right choice. It's not all perfect. There are a couple of criticisms, like the run speed for me is too slow and having a run button would have helped. But the big issue is the fact that it doesn't support multiplayer at launch. Now, it's something that Gameloft have already spoken about, and it's definitely in the works. It's just not ready at the moment. In a title that directly competes with Animal Crossing, in that regard, it's lacking. And by its nature, there's an intrinsic want to share what you've created with other people. The other floor, well, that's going to be in the next section. As it stands, though, Disney Dreamlight Valley, for a 30-something man, has been really, really fun. It's so nice meeting all of the different characters. It's sensible in terms of its progression and it really will appeal to Animal Crossing fans and those that like Sims in general. Things happen quickly and you rarely feel like your time's being wasted. But the other issue is what holds back gameplay and controls. Gameplay for me scores 16 out of 20 and the controls, they also score 16 out of 20. That then takes us on to visuals, performance and audio. And you already know what I'm going to say and I'm sure you've seen it in the footage. Performance at the moment isn't good. We're looking at 22 to 25 frames per second, and although it targets 30, it can dip below that often. It's one of those games where if you point the camera above your character straight down at the ground, then you'll be fine. But when there's a lot going on on screen, it simply can't handle it at the moment. It's a testament to how good the game is at its core that it still scored so highly in gameplay and controls because an inconsistent frame rate really does affect that enjoyment. On the flip side of a slightly inconsistent frame rate, which it has to be said is 30 inside buildings, 
There's the visual quality. I think the game looks quite lovely. It has a vibrant color palette. All of the characters look spot on, although I would have liked to see some animated emotions on those faces. But the resolution is also reasonably high. In fact, I think that's probably the area they're going to have to go to in order to improve performance. It looks to be a locked resolution rather than dynamic. In handheld, things are slightly better, maybe mildly, and the smaller screen makes things look nice and crispy. Now, one positive are the load times. I didn't clock a load time that was longer than 10 seconds once you're in the game. There is an initial loading bar before you actually get into the experience, but that's tied to your internet. And before you panic, you do not require the internet to play this game. However, you will require it when you first play to set up your account and set up your online cloud saving and all of that fun stuff. The cloud saving feature allows you to play cross-platform if you want to, but also make sure you don't lose any progress. Finally then, stability. I've experienced one crash in around about 20 hours, which isn't too bad opinion. I had left the game for a while, came back after a couple of hours, did a few slightly unusual things on the screen and it crashed. It hasn't crashed since and it hadn't crashed before. The audio work is exceptional. It will have all of your favourite songs in there. And hats off to Disney. Over the years, they've created some incredibly catchy music. What I have noticed is one performance issue that affects the audio. You may notice occasionally some audio duplication or some stuttering in the sound. It seems to happen when the frame rate drops down. It's another area they're going to have to patch up on Switch. As it stands, visuals and performance, they're currently balancing out at around about 10 out of 20. Music and audio fare much better, but they'll also need a bit of tweaking. They score 16 out of 20. Which takes us on to value. Now, as mentioned, I bought the £24.99 or your regional equivalent base version of the game, and I have never felt like I need to spend any money. There are a few rewards included in your mailbox for supporting the game at launch, but do you need to go out and buy the almost twice priced deluxe edition or the insanely priced ultimate edition? Absolutely not. No, you don't. If you're like a mega Disney fan, then all those cosmetics and other shiny things might appeal to you. But for everyone else, a 24 pound game that has this much content along the same lines as Animal Crossing, that's a competitor in my opinion. They just need to sort that performance out. As you know, value includes all areas. So currently, it scores 16 out of 20. Disney's Dreamlight Valley has been a surprise and a pleasant one at that. Although there are some issues which need to be worked on, I think once we have multiplayer, and everything's running as it should be, this would easily be in the mid 80s, maybe even higher. As it stands right now, it gets a switch up score of 74%. Let me know in the comments, have you been enjoying it as much as I have? Hopefully you feel like I've been fair in terms of the critiques, but really enjoyable. Thanks to our patrons and to all of you that support the channel. If you do buy the game, you can save another 10% by buying your eShop codes over at switchup.gg and use code switchup. For all things switch, all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.